How's it going everybody? My name's Connor Moriarty and thanks for tuning in to another video and welcome to Lightroom 101. So if you're watching this video, that means you want to know anything and everything there is to know about Lightroom. Now Lightroom is crazy big and there's no way we could possibly talk about it in just one episode. So that's why this is going to be a three part series where in each part we talk about a different aspect of Lightroom. In today's segment specifically, we're going to be talking about how to import photos and how to organize those photos. So that means you're definitely going to want to see the next couple episodes when they come out. So the best way to do that, hit that subscribe button below. You're going to be notified when exactly those videos come out. Those videos are going to be a lot more fun than this one. So definitely keep an eye out for them. Plus, that's just an amazing way for you to show your support for me making these informative videos for you guys. Anyways, without any further ado, let's head over into Lightroom so we can get this tutorial started. Alright guys, so first things first, we're over here on our desktop and we have to find the photos that we are going to want to bring into Lightroom. So I have mine right here in this folder. You find yours wherever you keep them. Open up that folder and you can either click and drag them to select some of them or select one and do Command A or Control A if you're on a PC, I'm on a Mac. That'll select all of them and all you're going to do is click and drag all of those over here into Lightroom. Give it a second to open up. And this is what you should see, or yours will look pretty darn close to this. You're seeing all your photos here um, in order from when you took them. Now right away, this probably isn't going to make any sense to you guys, but it seriously is pretty easy to understand. Over here on the left, this is basically saying where we're taking the photos from. So here you can see this is the folder that we just dragged all those photos from on our desktop. In the middle here, we're going to tell Lightroom what we want it to do with those photos. And then over here on the right, we're talking about where we want to put those photos. So it's kind of like a three-stage process. It'll make a lot more sense once I talk about it a little more. First thing you're definitely going to want to do is hit this copy button. Now what that does is it basically takes the photos that you select and it copies them and puts them somewhere on your computer, on your hard drive. So if you're taking this from an SD card or an external hard drive or wherever, you're basically copying those images onto your computer so Lightroom can recognize them. So as you probably can tell, we haven't even actually taken these photos. They're not actually in Lightroom yet. We haven't actually brought them in just yet. We're telling you Lightroom how to do it. So first, you're, the first thing I like to do is I like to go through all my photos and kind of decide which ones I want to bring into Lightroom. Some of the photos aren't good, you don't like them. So what you can do is go through all them and you want to check mark the ones that you want to bring into Lightroom. You can go up here and toggle this check mark here and that will toggle on and off all the photos. So what I like to do is just turn this off and then go one by one and check mark the ones that I want to import. Cool thing you can do is you can select one, hold down shift, and then press another one. It'll highlight all of them. And if you only press one check mark, it'll check all of them in there. So that'll make it a lot easier on you. So first of all, go through, check all the photos that you want to bring into Lightroom so you're not wasting any space with photos that you don't need. Finally, over here on the right, you're going to want to tell Lightroom where you want it to put your, put your photos and how you want it to do that. So everyone's different. You can choose here where on your desktop you want to put your photos. By default, it'll probably put your photos in your pictures folder if you're on a Mac. I'm not sure where it puts it if you're on a PC. But one thing you're definitely going to want to look into and possibly change is this stuff up here. So you can choose how you want to organize your photos or how you want to make this folder that these photos are going to be kept in. So if you're really picky, you can choose something. I'm fine with it organizing it by date. I don't really care. Um, something I like to do is check the into subfolder box and write what the folder, um, what the name of the folder is that you want. So I could type 
wedding here because I'm just exporting these photos into a wedding. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking these wedding photos and exporting them into a wedding folder basically. So you can see down here it's taking these, putting it in pictures folder, Lightroom folder, wedding folder, and then organizing by date. So that's basically what you want to do. So if you shot a soccer game, you can write soccer game up here. If you did a portrait of somebody named Stephanie, you can write Stephanie portraits up here. Whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. This all has to do with your personal preference for organizing photos. Now, I'm not going too deep into Lightroom in these episodes. This is really just beginner stuff. So you can play around with some of this other stuff up here. It's not essential for when you're importing photos. The only thing you might want to play around with is in the file handling box. This make a second copy it'll do exactly what it says. It'll make a second copy wherever you'd like it to if you check that box. Um, but we're not gonna worry about this stuff right now. So just for the sake of our purposes, go ahead and once you've chosen all the photos you want to import, hit the import button down here. Now for the sake of time, I have already gone through and selected what photos I want to import and done that import process. So, but for you, go ahead and cl click that import button and you should be taken to a screen that looks like this and up here you'll have a bar that'll slowly fill once your um, photos start importing and when they're done importing that bar will disappear. And then you'll officially be in Lightroom. You'll be able to see all your photos here and this is where the good stuff happens. This is where all the fun stuff happens. This is where you really start to work with your photos and create that stunning final product. So real quick I'm just going to show you a couple different things that you're generally going to need to know just to navigate Lightroom. I'm going to show you just what this stuff on the screen is, what it means. Um, over here, you just have a small thumbnail of the photo that you're selecting, what it looks like. Um, that's really all there is to it. You can see it changes every time I change a photo. Down here, you can see the, um, the different folders, the events, I guess, that you have imported into Lightroom. So if I hover over this one, you can see a preview of an event I worked on a few days ago. And down here you have some social sharing things. Um, I'm not going to get into that right now either, but that's a whole video in of itself. In the middle here you have your photos, just like we saw before. All the ones you selected are in here. You're able to scroll through all of them. If you double click on one, you can open it up. And then you can use the arrow keys to slowly jump through the photos. Now I imported my all of my photos, so all the crappy ones are in here too. Um, so here's one that I've already edited. But for the sake of this video, I can show you what these, button downs, these buttons down here mean. So we're currently selected on this. This, will, this button right here will expand the image. This one right here will go back to the thumbnail view that we just showed. Um, these ones down here do a couple different things, like this one can compare two images or the before and after of um, your editing of an image. Um, but really, just you don't need to mess around with these too much. These just go from thumbnail view to full view. Now, on, if you look at any of the sides of Lightroom, you're going to see these little arrows over here. Now, if you hover over them or just click them, basically what it does is it expands or collapses that side of Lightroom. So if we went to the arrows on all sides of the screen and click them, we could fully collapse Lightroom and make it so that we're only seeing the photo. I personally like to have the sides pulled up so I can see that and see that. These are the two modules I work in the most. If you just hold your mouse over one, you can see what's there. So here you can see this is basically thumbnail versions of all your photos. So you can see those. I don't like to have that up all the time, but if you click that arrow, you can toggle it on or off. I like to have mine off just so that when I go down there and hover and don't click, it pops up. And when I move my mouse away, it disappears, giving me more room to work. Let's go back into the thumbnail view here and scroll back up to the top. So the first thing I like to do in here before I start any sort of editing is I like to rename my photos. So the easiest way to do that is to go up to library and down to rename photos. Now just so you know you're going to want to have all your photos selected before you do this. So let's just go make sure we click one, command A or control A, whatever whether you're on a Mac or PC, and it's selected all of them, then go back to Library, Rename Photos. Now this all is up to personal preference as well. When it comes to organization, a lot of the time it is, so all this stuff is going to be personal preference, but I'm going to show you my favorite way of doing this step. If you've never been into Lightroom before or messed with these settings, click here and go to Edit. Basically what this is doing is this is allowing you to set up 
um, custom settings for how you want to rename all your photos in the future. So let's delete that and I'll show you what I like to do. I like all my photos to be named by date, then by the unique name, and then by a sequence order. That doesn't sound like anything, but I'll show you what that means right now. So if I go down here to date, you have all these different date options. I personally prefer the year, month, date, all in two numerals right here. So if you click that and press insert, you'll see it up there. So I'm gonna put an underscore to separate all, everything by an underscore. Then I like to have my custom text or the text that is unique for every um, event that I edit. I like to have that in the middle here. So I'll go down here to custom text and press insert. And here I'll have a custom text bar do another underscore and then finally I like to have a sequence number so you can do um, just single digit double digit triple quadruple whatever tons of different variations I like to have my sequence number with triple digits that usually gets the job done press insert and this is what you have so I'll show you what that translates to so if you go down here and uh, say save current settings as new preset rename that and I'll just rename it my preset and hit create now press done and that will now be in this uh, menu of presets so if I press cancel and I do the same thing where I go up to library rename photos you'll be able to see my preset is right there for you so that custom text before, that's just going to be what you want to name all the photos in here. So I want to name mine wedding, and you'll see what that did. It put that right in here. So here we have the date. Um, we have 2017, April 1st. That's when the photos were taken. Then you have the unique name here, and then you have the sequence number here. So it says 001 right now, but basically when I press OK, it's going to make it so that all the photos go in order from 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way through, and I have like 900 photos. They will all have a unique name. So go ahead and press OK to rename your photos. And that's it. So now you have renamed all of your photos. The next thing I like to do is set up your metadata. Now you don't have to do this. Um, a lot of photographers don't. But if you want to keep your photos safe and attach the right information to your photos, you're definitely going to want to do this. So if you go over here to this area over here, and this will be closed when you first open, and you open the metadata icon, you'll have all this confusing stuff. I'll show you what I like to do. I like to go to presets here and edit presets, okay? Now here you are going to have a long list of a ton of different boxes to fill out. Now all this is, is this is information that you want to tie to every image that you take. So for example, I'm Connor Moriarty, I would like my name, my website, my copyright tied to every photo that I take. So the, one, the boxes that are in red, like you see here, and down here, all this in red, those are required things that you have to fill out or that I have decided that I needed to fill out. And once I fill all those out and hit done down here, it'll apply that information to every photo. So if anyone tries to take my photos from the internet, they can see who took it, when they took it, what the copyright is, all of that stuff. Now, no, I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, how the hell am I going to fill out all that information for every single photo that I take? Well, there's an answer to that. It's really simple. Go ahead and fill out the information once. That's the only time you have to do it. And once you're done, go up to the top here and say, save current presets as new preset. And once you do that, you'll save all that information that you filled out and you'll be able to apply it in the future, which is one click of a button. So I have already um, filled out all my presets. I have it named right here. And all my information is filled in down here. I'm not going to scroll down because I don't want you guys to know where I live or what my phone number and email address is, but you get the picture. The only thing I do every time that I um, edit new photos is I edit the caption here. So here I can do wedding, okay? And that'll be the caption for every single photo. Other than that, every single photo will have copyright, my website, my name, um, all that sort of stuff. So click done, 
save. And over here, well first, select all your photos again if you unselected them. And over here, you will see your preset right here. So once you click that preset, that um, the things that you just filled out are, are going to be applied to every single photo that you have highlighted. So it really is that easy, guys. So now you have renamed all your photos to have unique names, and you have attached metadata information to every single one of them. So hopefully that made sense, guys. That's the boring, that's the confusing part. Once you get past that, it's smooth sailing from there, and it gets a lot more interesting. So once you get going with editing the photos, the first thing I like to do is just select the first one, go through them all, and rate them. Basically what this means is you are deciding what photos you want to keep and what photos you don't. Now there are, there are a few different ways to do this. You can rate it with the star system, you can rate it by color, you can flag it or unflag it. Every photographer has their method of doing it. My personal favorite way is to use stars and I'll show you why. So flip through, your, once you've clicked on a photo, you can click through all those photos with your arrow keys. And once you find one that you particularly enjoy, so this one that I've already edited, I'll press one on the keyboard. Or you can go down here to this star and press one. You can press two, three, four, five, whatever you want. I press one on the photos that I wanna keep just so I can differentiate between those photos. So go through all your photos and just press one or make any sort of rating on the photos that you would like to keep. So if I go to here to all my thumbnails, I have already gone through and selected all the photos that I think are worthy of keeping and editing and eventually exporting and giving to my clients. And I have rated them all with ones or twos or threes depending on how I want to use them. For example, this set of photos right here, this is the first look, so this is when um, the bride came out and showed the groom her dress. So I took a series of photos here, edited some of them, and what I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do this when I was shooting, I wanted to make a GIF or a short, really short clip, um, piecing these photos together real short and making it into a short little clip. So these ones I marked with two stars because I wanted to use them for something different than just giving the client. So that's just what I like to do. I mean, this is just showing you that you can mark the photos with different ratings for different purposes. So the ones that I wanna to give to the client, I gave one star. The ones that I wanted to be in this little short clip, I made two stars. Now, if you click into a photo, you can see down here at the bottom, there are flags here. You can also flag photos that you like. Um, that's another way of doing it. I don't think it's as intuitive or as easy, but that's another way of doing it. Let's go back here and back up to the top. And I'll show you my number one favorite reason why I like to use the rating system. And that's because you can come up here to edit and go down to select by rating. And you can select your photos based on the ratings that they have. So if I want to select only the photos that have one star rating, I'll come down here, click that. And right away, only the photos that I've rated with one star will show up. And I can click through them. And those are the only photos that appear. So that's a huge benefit. You can instantly filter through and basically I'm not seeing anything except for the photos that I rated by one star. If I go to edit, select by rating and do two stars, now I'll be able to see these photos. There, if I play those really fast, you can kind of see that clip I was talking about. But anyways, that's just a really useful way of using the ranking system. So again, just to recap, go through all your photos, pick your favorite ones, set it to a specific ranking, and then just go to edit, select by rating, and press whichever one you selected, you decided to use, and then you'll just be able to go through those photos and those photos alone without having to worry about all the other photos that you don't want to use. Also, as far as customization goes in Lightroom, you can customize, again, these, um, these side panels a little bit more. You can come over here and drag them in. Um, so if you wanna see more of this one or if you wanna see less of it, drag it out. I, I personally use this panel the most, so I could take this and drag it out, 
so I can see a lot more of it, have a lot more room to work. Um, you can do that with any one of these panels and really it just makes the whole thing a lot more customizable, a lot more intuitive. You can make it really small to get all that stuff out of the way if you wanted to. This is about how big I like it. So that's just another little feature to make the whole thing just more seamless. But anyways guys, that's pretty much it. Um, honestly, importing and organizing your photos, it's really not that difficult. Um, there's not much to it. So I hope you learned something. I will just shortly recap what I went over. So the first thing you're going to want to do is drag your photos into Lightroom. You're going to want to pick what you want Lightroom to do with the photos, where to put the photos, and then press import. Once you're into Lightroom, play around and play with these buttons all over the place and play around with just how to navigate the space. Once you learn how to navigate the space really quickly, really easily, it becomes a lot easier to work in. Next, you learned how to rename your photos. It's really easy to rename your photos once you set up all your presets. It's just a couple clicks away from every single time renaming your photos and having totally organized and seamless folders and file names. Then I showed you how to do metadata. I think that's really important to do. Once you set up your metadata presets, that information will always be tied to your photos and you'll never run the risk of someone taking your photos or using them how they shouldn't be using them. Next, I showed you how to do ratings. Um, I think it's really fun and easy to do your ratings. You can select all, but only the images you want based on the ratings you made. Um, you can decide if what some images are better than others based on how many stars they have. Or if you take a break from editing, you can always go back and quickly remember how, what you thought about that photo based on the ratings that it had. And then I just showed you a couple different ways on how to customize your layout of everything in Lightroom. Um, how to change the size of things and make them even disappear and really just uh, expand the space as a whole. So that's it guys. That's it for this first episode on how to import and organize photos. I hope you learned something. I hope that was pretty informative and stay tuned for those next couple episodes because those are definitely going to be a lot of fun. In the next episode we're going to be going over to the develop tab and talking about exactly how to edit all your photos. It's going to be really interesting so hit that subscribe button below. You're gonna be notified when that next video comes out. Also, smash that like button below. That's another great way for you to show your support for these videos and for me making more videos in the future. Anyways, I won't take up any more of your guys' time. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for those other videos and have a great day.